Today we are going to talk about the most bizarre cases in the art community I have seen that made me question if I was even an artist or if I really wanted to be a part of the art community at all. The first case file we are going to look at is from our one and only Bluebird app which is a breeding ground for just trolls and people who seem to have a lot of time on their hands apparently. So if you are new to this channel and love listening to videos discussing art commentary and talking about the art community, please subscribe to the channel and join the discord server with the link in the description. When Puss in Boots came out and shocked everyone with how good the story was and presented us with one of the most memorable villains in animation history coupled with a ton of beautiful art, many artists who enjoyed the movie started drawing fan art and posting on their social media platforms so other people who enjoyed the movie could see their awesome art and share it, comment on it and every other thing people do on the internet. But this entire process somehow managed to take a twist for this artist on Twitter after they made their own version of Puss a little more human. But before we begin to even talk about the Twitter art community and how they created a scene about this image, can we just take a moment to appreciate just how beautiful Megane's fan art is? Everything about it is so perfect. The lighting, the colors, the anatomy, his smile. It was perfect down to the last minute details. The fan art really captures Puss in his element and really nails his cocky yet playful and friendly demeanor. 10 over 10 fan art will definitely recommend. Now while us normal people were busy appreciating the image and just how good it is, some people on Twitter had something to say about it because according to them, Puss cannot be a Latino and a light skinned one at that because all Latinos have dark skin or are tanned for the most part. So this person made a comment under the artist post saying, I will think a more Spanish look will fit better I'll be honest. And then someone replied to them saying, this is a Spanish look. If you mean stereotypical Spanish look which is usually gypsy look which is not even originally Spanish, we've had enough of those. If you mean the red hair, thing is. He's an orange cat, it fits him well. No, I meant darker skin, sort of like his voice actor, Antonio Banderas. Am I mistaking something here? Is it just me or like, is there something wrong here? Am I missing something? <laughs> because like, Antonio Banderas is not like black black now, is he? I'm certain he's kinda lighter in complexion than the average black person so comparing the colors in the drawing with him is giving ignorance if I'm being honest with you. Obviously everyone in the comments immediately started replying to them telling them they were wrong and saying Antonio Banderas was not a black person and people started making jokes using the same logic as the person who made the comment just to show how flawed it was and how out of touch they were with reality. Someone literally even took a photo of their skin just to show the person who left the comment that they are Spanish people who have lighter skin. So for them to assume the drawing is wrong and claim it would be better if the skin tone of the character was made darker were either trolling or being ignorant just to get a reaction from people or they genuinely had no idea what they were talking about and pretty much needed the amount of schooling they were receiving for free. This entire comment section has told me that people don't understand geography and skin color and will assume someone's color based on their language without any regard where the language actually comes from. The funniest thing is that most Latinos hate Spaniards because they usually are very racist towards Latinos. So seeing Latinos actually defending Spaniards for once just shows how much the Spanish language can put their differences aside if it means dunking on the English. It's really simple. The Europeans are white, therefore also the Spaniards are white. In addition, the English are also white and the Americans are European descendants. That is why they are white too. What I can't seem to understand up till this day is why people on Twitter use the skin tone of a drawing to dictate if it's good or bad totally ignoring the context of the character and automatically assuming their interpretation of the character is the only right one for any artist to draw from. There is no right or wrong way of drawing fan art of non-existing characters, especially when you are turning them into human versions of themselves. 
Of course, taking account of the character's backstory, personality traits, and demeanor can help establish what race the character might fit into, that is if they were to be imagined as live action characters. But just as you may know one race can have multiple skin color, it's just a very bizarre and ridiculous mindset to have. But another person commented saying most of the people criticizing the artist's choice of skin color in their drawing were probably just confusing Spanish people with Mexican people, which is why they were assuming he should have been black until everyone started pointing out the obvious for them. Some of the comments were even filled with people speaking Spanish and calling the person who made the comment out and accusing them of having internalized racism and hate for all things not snow white like their skin color. I think my major grip with this situation is the fact that a huge number of people chose to ignore the beautiful image the artist had posted and instead of appreciating it like every other normal person, they chose to make it a case for the artist which is why some young artists are even hesitant when it comes to sharing their art, especially on Twitter, because they have realized there's always that one person who'll make it a case and leave a random comment about the skin tone of the character, or in some cases even go as far as fixing their drawing for them without their permission in the first place. Just let artists draw whatever they want, how they want, and stop being so mean and negative to them. If there's one thing everyone in the art community unanimously hates, it definitely has to be art thieves. From stealing work from other artists to tracing another person's work and claiming it as theirs, art thieves have grown to become the most hated culprits in the art community. Take this one art thief for instance, who was stealing from this amazing young artist called Soberpen and what's worse about it is, this art thief wasn't just stealing to post on their social media to farm a few likes and engagement. They literally stole his work and put them up for sale on multiple items they had in their catalog on a website they used to showcase their merchandise. They were even receiving multiple reviews from people who had supposedly bought a few items from their store and sadly enough, all the reviews were praising them for the work without knowing it didn't belong to them in the first place and was actually traced from another artist altogether. To even make it worse, they changed the character up entirely so the untrained eye wouldn't notice it were traced but unfortunately for them, the original artist found out about their work and immediately posted on their Twitter account calling for other people to report the account for stealing their art and trying to make a profit off of it. And everyone supported them as much as they could calling the art thief out and reporting their red bubble portfolio for selling stolen art across the entire catalog. And if that story is not annoying enough, let's take a look at this art thief who has no conscience at all and has earned themselves the crown of being the worst art thief to have ever existed on any platform or social media. And just because of how sensitive this topic is, please I encourage everyone watching this video right now to pay their respect to the artist and their family and leave some kind words for her soul in the comments as she sadly passed away after battling with cancer for so long. My thoughts and prayers go to her and her family. May her soul rest in peace. As everyone on Twitter were paying their condolences to Kini's family, some people thought it was the perfect opportunity to make some profit with her work and stole one of her most recent pieces she made shortly before passing and listed it as an NFT on one of those boring NFT marketplace thingies. With no remorse, no notes, nothing about her or her family, it wasn't even a tribute to her legacy or anything, just blatant art theft showing they had no regard for her family or her fans. Her brother then made a post on her account asking for everyone to report the accounts that were selling the NFTs and any other accounts they found selling any art of Kini. Since no member of her family was aware of this or made any negotiations to have her work sold or anything, it's sad that most of these platforms fail to implement proper means for artists to have decent protection against things like art theft and they literally let anyone come on the platform and sell images without them and holding them accountable if they are found to be infringing on copyrighted material from another artist. And the annoying thing is some of these art thieves do not care if your work is signed or contains a watermark. They still take it regardless and post it with your signature inside but the really clever ones try their best to hide it or crop it out so they can pretend the image belongs to them. Even after the store was successfully closed down, 
Kini's work still somehow managed to find its way into NFTs again when DeviantArt announced they were including an AI that automatically sources images from every artist on the platform and the only way for you to exclude your work from the AI was if you logged into your account and manually opted out of the service which was such a terrible decision for them to make and like no one even ever asks for that. But I guess they figured the world was moving forward with AI so they decided to go along with it and screw over artists who have been on their platform for years and have their entire portfolio from when they started art till now on there. Well I'm just glad Kini's art has been taken off all platforms exploiting her art and most if not all of the accounts have been suspended or shut down. Now this artist is not an art thief at all and instead uses her art to catch thieves. Isn't it crazy how she has caught over a thousand criminals over the span of 30 years with her drawings and with as little descriptions as possible, she somehow always manages to nail the resemblance of the criminals in her drawings, helping the police department solve the case and send them back to the lobby. This is Lois Gibson holding her Guinness world record for the most criminals identified by a forensic artist, which is not an easy feat at all. Lois Gibson who works with the Houston police department as a forensic artist spends her her days sitting in front of her canvas drawing lifelike portraits of criminals and hoodlums based on loose descriptions from their victims who are in shock from their encounter and sometimes are too stunned to remember all the details of what the attacker looked like since most of the time they only get a glimpse of them after the crime had been committed for the most part. But according to Lois who asked the victims a very specific question which is if they can remember the expression the assailant had on their face then that means they saw the face even if they were we're so sure they didn't. Now I'm sure some of you are like, hey, whoa, 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 what is a forensic artist? Well, forensic artists are artists who work with law enforcement officers to identify criminal suspects and victims through facial composite sketches. Sometimes they work freelance or as full-time employees with local, state and federal law enforcement agencies. They are also often called to the scene of a crime to create drawings, skill diagrams and models of the crime scenes. Forensic artists utilize their knowledge of facial anatomy to create realistic portraits of suspects and missing criminals. So having a key keen eye for detail and a knack for nailing resemblances is very crucial in becoming a forensic artist, which is something Sam does arts might be quite good at. As a forensic artist, Lois has mastered the art of not just knowing how to draw but understanding how to listen and absorb keen details from the victim's limited descriptions to be able to produce realistic portraits with the resemblances close to the perpetrators without ever having seen them at all. Each portrait not only marks a striking resemblance to the real crooks, but catches their entire essence to the point where literally anyone can see the drawing in the news and immediately recognize them if they have come in contact with them before. One of her drawings was so good at nailing the likeness of a criminal that he turned himself in immediately after seeing it after it was published. Her drawings range from simple black and white sketches using charcoal to color with pastels and whatnot. She also carries with her a catalog of images of different ears, eyebrows, noses and lips, basically like a 2K creator player but in real life. I'm guessing she uses each of these features to further enhance the likeness of the person by using descriptions of their individual features and drawing them in separately in a Frankenstein manner until the face starts to take shape. Which is a very smart thing to do since it gives a large source to create many different faces with a variety of facial structures and diverse features. Looking at many of the portraits, the criminals always have a very disturbing look in their eyes. You can tell something seems off with them and there's a certain look of desperation and urgency in their gaze. Lois spends time in her studio drawing with the victims and each encounter takes her through an emotional journey as the victims go through their past trauma while trying to make sense of the details so Lois can draw a close enough picture for them. Lois sympathizes with the victims and shares their pain during these conversations comforting them with kind words and reassuring them that everything is okay and helping them ease the load of the heavy burden they have carried since some of these criminal cases range from robbery and petty theft all the way to murder and rape. But this was not always so for Lois, as before she began her career as a forensic artist, she was just living her life as a normal 21 year old young adult pursuing a career in dance and acting in Los Angeles. But sometime in 1972, she would find herself in the 
very seat she now assumes for her victims after she was unfortunately attacked by a brutal murderer and rapist and almost lost her life. After experiencing such a traumatizing event at that age and soon after witnessing her attacker get arrested, Lois decided to embark on a journey to help other victims of sexual assault, harassment and other crimes fight for justice and place the perpetrators behind bars. She got a degree for art and soon started working as a portrait artist drawing tourists which in turn helped her to fine tune her skill that will later become a very important asset in her journey to becoming a forensic artist. After her time as a portrait artist, she volunteered her skills to the Houston department where she believed with her skills she could draw the criminal right there on the spot after a quick talk with the victim or witness on the scene of the crime. After the first two tries, she finally got successful on the third where she was able to help the police get a bust with her drawing. She quickly became an important part of the police department and helped in the arrest of over 750 criminals who were identified through her drawings. She then became a full-time professional forensic artist working with the police department and drawing two to three sketches for around three to five hours per week which are remarkably accurate using descriptions from her meetings with victims who were initially unable to provide as much details to help the detectives on the case. As an indispensable asset to the police department, Lois sometimes has to not only solve cases of creating drawings of criminals but also help in identifying victims of murders and other crimes. One of her publicized cases was examining the decomposing remains of a child that had been locked up in a plastic box floating in Galveston Bay where she was able to produce a drawing of what the child looked like before the incident and their grandmother was able to recognize them after it was broadcasted. Lois has assisted in solving cases from female kidnappings to murder and most of the times when her drawings are published, the people who eventually recognize the criminals and call in to report them are usually their friends and family members who probably had no idea these people were criminals and were shocked to find out they were pretty dangerous people and were being hunted by the law or wanted for their hideous crimes. Lois has become such an important part of the police force that they believe it will be nearly impossible to replace her when she retires, which kinda mirrors how she got in working with law enforcement. Since they didn't see the need to employ an artist at first and didn't think it will serve any purpose to keep an artist in the department and in turn had her working from out of the office for over 7 years before finally giving her a job as a professional forensic artist. Since there aren't many forensic artists around, Lois has been fortunate enough to travel around from state to state helping out other police departments solve cases where her skills are required and she has also started to train other artists and officers who are interested in learning the skills required to become a good forensic artist so they can also be of service to their departments as well. She also teaches at a university and has since then published a book discussing the fundamentals of forensic art. Despite having had her career for this long, Lois still travels around the world helping people and is dedicated in making the world a much safer and better place through her art and spreading peace and positivity through her interactions with people. Anyways, that's all I have for you today. Please leave a like on the video and share it with a friend and subscribe to the channel if you are new here. I'll see all you pretty penguins in the next video. Bye.